Today we're going to be looking at one of these things. If you've worked at a restaurant before, specifically McDonald's, you have probably seen one of these things. Uh, these are what you use to clear the orders off the screen when you're done making them and giving them to your customers. These things break all the time because they go through a lot of wear and tear. We serve a lot of orders off the screen and these things are also like $70 a piece. So when they break, um, they're kind of expensive to replace. But I have figured out how you can fix these things very simply and save yourself a lot of money at your restaurant. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to fix these things. I just want to throw this in there real quick. This method works on any mechanical keyboard. So we're going to take one of these tools. This is called keycap remover. This is used on keyboards. So like if I were to try and pull this off, um, because this is just like normal keyboard keys. So I'm going to use it to pull all of these off. And if you look closely, if you know anything about mechanical keyboards, you uh, you know what we're looking at. This is a Cherry MX Black switch, which is a, uh, a very good uh, mechanical keyboard switch. It's a linear switch with no click, and it has, I think, 100 grams of pressure or, what, or tension. Um, it, it's designed to um, take a little bit of wear and tear um, compared to a red or a blue. Um, but, you know, we, we get pretty brutal in these restaurants. Um, you know, you can see the plastic film here. Um, that's to protect it from, like, grease. If you look at the thing, I mean, it's, it's dirty. These things get dirty. I don't want to scare anyone away from a restaurant. But, you know, it is, it is a fast food restaurant. We do deal with oil and grease, you know. Um, I don't find it gross, um, but, you know, it is there. So we got all the keys off. You can see the circuit board exposed. I'm going to flip it over, take a little screwdriver, and there are four screws on the back. So I'm gonna start with this one right here, covered in nasty. Um, pull it out real quick. There's one. Second one down here. And then two more at the bottom. These ones are uh, kind of in a deeper space, so kind of just wanna unscrew them all the way and then it'll just come apart. And then if you flip it over, the screws are right there. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. Here's our circuit board that we'll be looking at. Um, and I'll, I'll take the other plastic piece and put it off to the side. So I usually peel this uh, plastic off. It's designed to uh, protect it from grease that's um, you know evaporating into the air. But, you know, it's already broken. Um, I, I, I feel like we can pull this off. Um, you know, it's either this or we spend $70 and buy an extra one. So, you can pretty much see which keys are uh, functional, which is most of them. This top one's got no spring. I don't know what happened to this one up here. I've, I've actually not seen this very often. Usually, uh, usually, they just break off and I have to put new ones on. So, I'll flip it over. So, the two soldering points, we... Uh, I'm going to be paying attention to so right there and right there, right there, right there. So each, uh, each key has two soldering points. Um, you can see the back of the key cap uh, right there. So it fits in how it's supposed to. Um, I've got some extra new key caps. You can just order these on Amazon. Um, you can get like what, 10 for $10. They're basically a dollar a piece, um, which is, um, you know, pretty pricey for how big it is, but, um, these are pretty good keycaps. Theoretically, you could also put whatever cherry switch in here, but um, for consistency purposes, I'm gonna put the blacks in there. Um, if I run out, I think I got some RGB MX blues, um, but I, I don't know if uh, my owners would be too happy about that being in our McDonald's keyboards. I'm gonna get this set up so that I can solder because I can't hold the phone and solder at the same time, and we'll, we'll get on uh, switching these uh, two keys. I'm gonna try my best, move everything out of the way. You don't really need a soldering station for this. I mean, this is kind of a janky Amazon one. Um, the best, I, I've kind of come up with the best method is to hold it. Um, you can use, if I can find where I put it, you can use one of these to kind of like pull them off, but um, it's not really that necessary because you can just grab it. But um, when you're soldering, it does get pretty hot there. Here's my soldering iron. These things cost like 10 bucks on Amazon. Um, works just fine for what it is. It, you know, if it gets dirty, you can just buy a new one and it's not that big of a deal. Uh, so I'm going to plug it in over here and turn it on. 
I guess we gotta wait now, so I might as well cut the video. I think my soldering iron's heated up enough. I'll try my best to do this. I'm looking into the foam to make sure I'm getting everything into the shot. But we're gonna be taking these two top two keys off. So you have to, it's hard because you have to unsolder these both at the same time. Maybe let me, let me switch hands here. Okay, so I kind of like get one hand and grip the uh, the key cap, and then I'll take the soldering iron and then go back and forth between the two uh, soldering points because you have to do them both in order for the key to actually come out. But you you know you only have one end on the soldering iron, so you gotta kind of go back and forth, heating both of them up, pulling it out a little by little. But um, your 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 fingers are on the other side, gripping it and pulling on it while you touch it with the soldering iron. So just like that, I was able to pull it off. This key is absolute garbage. So I'm gonna set it off to the side. So that's one. Now we're gonna do this other one on, on the top. So this one, a little less uh, room to grip it because the key is absolutely destroyed, um, but we'll try our best here. You, know, you wanna be a little careful that you don't really melt any plastic by touching the uh, the back of the keycap. But on the on the one you're taking out, that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, now this is where, this is where problems might occur because um, the, the, the soldering iron is gonna start heating up the board as you're uh, touching it. So you wanna be careful and make sure you don't burn yourself when you do this. But like I said, you have to do both soldering points at the same time, which is theoretically impossible. I will speed this part of the video up. Sometimes you can give it a good poke and push it through the hole. Let's see if that. All right, still stuck at one end. There we go. Okay, so that other one's out. You wanna make sure you don't got uh, any too much solder on the sides. Um, you don't wanna accidentally sh short any of the uh, circuits on here or else the button won't work at all. Um, so we're gonna take our new key cap, uh, make sure that your, uh, your pins are uh, straight on there and that they both go on. So the best method I've found is to line it up how it goes on there. The pins with the metal and then once you got them lined up you push from the other side and then you hit heat the solder up from the other end so get it lined up you know there might be a hole that it might start fitting into but like like I said before you pretty much have to have both holes open for it to go in properly so give it a little poke to loosen up the solder and then the pin should just go through and like I said with uh, taking it out you're gonna have to do both to gradually get it in there but once you got it in there uh, pretty solid you can uh, set it down I'm gonna sit down real quick and make sure you put a little bit more solder on there It might be good to have some flux for this, but you can really do without it. You know, this just takes practice. If you've done soldering before, you can do stuff like this, but this is how I learned how to solder on circuit boards is by doing this. But solder has surface tension, so once you get it heated up, it should blob right on there. Um, me talking probably doesn't help. I'm like blowing all the solder all over the place. All right, there we go. We got a nice little ball on there. We're not using any uh, ventilation because uh, that's for that's for the week. We we, uh, we can read just fine. So a um, little messy, but uh, it gets the job done. I'm gonna put a little bit more solder on this side. When it's on the circuit board, on the pin, 
If you give it a little uh, tap and uh, heat it up a little bit, it should ball up just because of surface tension. That got one key on there. Check to make sure it's nice and secure. It might rock a little bit just because the uh, the plastic on plastic uh, within the key kind of rocks a little bit, but you you should be able to tell if it's uh, solidly on there. Um, so my my solder doesn't look as good as the machines, but you know what can I say? We're saving seventy dollars here. Um, so here's another key right here. This one looks like I took it off of one. So this one might work. I think I took it off of a board that didn't work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on there and uh, I'll test it out to make sure it works. So we'll do what we did before. Um, actually, okay, we're pretty much stuck using this one. So the pin's kind of uh, bent. I'm gonna pull the solder off of it. Okay, so we're gonna try going this way. So that kind of put a little hole in there. All right, so you wanna do it that direction instead. That way it, uh, kind of gives you a little divot to uh, stick the pin in. So once you got the pins lined up, try not to burn yourself. If you can find a better method to do this, by all means, go for it. This is the best method I've found for myself as far as uh, how I'm holding it. You kind of just rock it back and forth as it goes in. And uh, I think it's in all the way. So we'll put some more solder on there, like with the other one. This one already has, this one might have enough on it, but. All right, that went a lot smoother. So now we have these two keys attached and they should work just fine I can't test this at home this is something you're gonna have to test at the restaurant um, because you're gonna need to put keycaps on it the keycaps I had at the start of the video were just random keycaps I had laying around um, I don't actually have a full set but you know you usually go up to the broken bump bar take all the keycaps off of it put them on the new one then take that one home with you and fix that one so kind of develop a stash of broken bump bars so at this point, the uh, circuit board can go back in, make sure the uh, phone lines are lined up with that. Screw holes line up on the uh, four corners, and then take your top. That'll go right on, flip it over. Okay, maybe don't set it on the table uh, because it'll just push the key caps up. Um, Put, put one screw in each corner. If you're screwing into plastic, it's not going to feel necessarily too perfect. But just whatever holds it together. I don't think this is the hardest part. I don't, I don't think this is the part that I should really have to teach in the video, but I'm trying my best to get it on the camera. All right, so now that i got the screws in, done struggling with that we have a finished fixed bump bar. So you'll probably need this to get the keys off the uh, broken bump bar that you're replacing, but you don't really need it to put them on. You can just make sure you put it in the middle hole. I probably should uh, put it on the, uh, the ones I just fixed and serve them off. Or show them off, that is. There you go. So I'm going to take those off. So when you, when you finish doing this, you want to take it to the restaurant and test it. Um, when you plug it in, this light will light up. And every time you press a button, if it's functioning, that light will go from green to red. Um, the only case that it might not work, um, I found that there are some circuit boards that will light up but won't do anything on the uh, KVS controllers. So those just um, you might want to have to throw away and uh, take your, uh, cut your losses on that one. Uh, especially if you spent time fixing it. But I did that and uh, it didn't work. But it lit up, it just didn't work. So, um, yeah, 